what's up? When I wanna make a quick weeknight dinner, I almost always end up making a stir fry because they're infinitely customizable based on whatever I have in the fridge, and they usually only take me about 25 minutes. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to make three weeknight stir fries that are craveable, heavy on the veggies, and easy enough for just about anyone to make. This is weeknighting. First up is what I call veggie teriyaki. It's light, but satisfying, and just what I need after two weeks of holiday eating followed by one week of vacation eating. I feel disgusting. To get started, let's make the sauce. That's simple enough. I'll just grab a little container and into it combine 50 grams of soy sauce, 50 grams of mirin, five grams of rice vinegar, 20 grams of sugar, 40 grams of chicken stock or water, and then three to four grams of cornstarch, depending on how thick you like your stir fry. Now, a quick stir to combine, and that's that. A very simple, flavorful sauce that can be used for pretty much any stir fry. For now, I'll set this off to the side so that we can take a look at all the ingredients that make up this dish. In total, you're gonna need about 500 grams or 18 ounces of at least three, but preferably five to six different veggies. Today, I've got roughly 75 grams of broccoli that I've cut into small florets that are about one inch or smaller. I've also got 75 grams of sugar snap peas that I've taken the string out of. Next to those, I've got 75 grams of one of my favorite ingredients of all time, fresh baby corn. It's sweet, snappy, it cooks quickly, and it's perfect for stir fry. I have mine. I've also got 75 grams of bell peppers that I've sliced to a medium thickness like this, 75 grams of carrots that I've sliced thinly on a bias, and then the last veggie that I've got here is actually fungus. Roughly 75 grams of medium thickness button mushrooms. And to clarify, I'm saying 75 grams, but when I'm cooking on weeknights, I rarely measure this stuff. Just eyeball it, you guys. In total, you need about five to six cups of cut veggies all day. Next, for the aromatic part of this dish, I've got five grams each of ginger and garlic here. I grated these on my microplane as usual, but of course, if you don't have one of those, mincing with a knife would also work. And then finally, I've got 40 grams of sliced scallions. These are just the vegetables that I like to use for this dish, but use whatever veggies you have on hand. Maybe throw in some zucchini or celery. All I'm saying is that this recipe is highly adaptable. Now, Let's cook this thing. For quick weeknight stir fries like this, I usually use a large nonstick pan. This is a 12 inch version and I'm preheating it over medium high heat. Medium high instead of just plain high because nonsticks are no good over 450F. The coating will start to vaporize and that's not good for you or the pan. But despite having this heat speed limit, I prefer a nonstick pan for weeknight stir fries over a wok for three reasons. One, they emit way less smoke. Check out my beef and broccoli video to see exactly what I'm talking about there. Number two, you can cook more food at one time usually, especially if your pan is 12 inches or above. And number three, I figured out a way to roughly approximate the intensity and speed of wok cooking with a little trick that I'll get to in just a second. Now, once my pan is hot, but not too hot, I'll add in a little squeezer of neutral oil, about two teaspoons worth. Next, in goes my mushrooms, then a strong pinch of salt, and then I'll jump in with a wooden spoon and give these mushrooms a toss and a stir to get them cooking. I'll cook the mushrooms alone and first here because they have to lose a bunch of their water before they really start to get tender. There's nothing worse than a stir fry than an undercooked spongy mushroom. Once these have taken on some color and have lost about half of their water, I'll add in another teaspoon or so of oil and then the carrots, the broccoli, and the baby corn. I'll jump back in with my spoon now to give everything a quick toss to combine and mention that I'm cooking the veggies in two batches here so that this pan doesn't get overcrowded and stop cooking things evenly. And also so that I can cook these denser veggies with more substance for a longer period of time. Now let's get to that little trick that I mentioned a second ago. To speed up the cooking of these veggies, and up the intensity of the heat, I'm gonna cover them with a round of aluminum foil and then let them sit undisturbed over medium high heat for at least a minute, but probably closer to 90 seconds. This method traps all of the steam that the veggies are releasing as they cook and then uses that steam to dramatically up the temperature of the cooking environment. Plus not moving them while they're steaming allows me to sear or roast them on the pan side. This combo of highly localized heat and intense steaming comes pretty close to what happens inside of a wok. Is it a perfect reproduction? Definitely not, but it does cook the veg in a way that is similar. This broccoli is still crunchy, but tender and has some nice roasty caramelization going on in certain parts. So after about three minutes in total, I'm gonna flip these over into a bowl to hang out while I cook round two. Back at the stove, I've got a hot pan, so in goes another two teaspoons of oil, then my peppers, snap peas, and some salt. Now, quick toss to get those combined, and once things have heated up and are starting to fry, I'll add on my foil lid, just like before, and steam fry these until the peppers and peas are softened, but still a little bit snappy. And once 
once they're all roasty like this, I'm gonna add in my aromatics. That's ginger, garlic, and scallions, and then a quick toss to get that combined. I'll fry this together for about 30 to 60 more seconds to open up their flavor while being careful not to burn them. And once this is smelling fragrant and the raw edge has been cooked off of those aromatics, I'll come back with my veggies from round one and then give everything a quick toss to combine. Next, in goes my stir fry sauce. And right away, that should come up to a rapid simmer. I'll give that about 30 seconds to reduce and thicken to the point where the sauce is coating the veggies, but isn't overly gloppy or thick like food court Chinese food. If a spoon can leave a trail through it, I'm happy. And for me, this dish is a welcome change of pace after the holidays and a great way to start the new year with something fresh and light, but super flavorful. This looks like and tastes like takeout Chinese food, but actually has some nutritional value. It's just saucy vegetables on rice, you guys, with some baby corn. There's nothing else that I want more in this moment, and I hope you try it soon. Okay, next up is a faster, simpler version of Kung Pao chicken. To make the stir fry sauce, I'll combine 50 grams of soy sauce, 25 grams of Shaoxing Chinese cooking wine, then 10 grams of white distilled vinegar, 20 grams of brown sugar, 15 grams of sesame oil, 40 grams of chicken stock, three grams of cornstarch, and then finally two to three grams of chili flakes to bring some heat. A quick stir to dissolve that cornstarch, and then I'll set it aside so we can take a look at what goes into the dish. To start, I've got 12 ounces or about 350 grams of small diced chicken thighs. Next, I've got 100 grams of medium diced celery, 225 grams of medium diced peppers. This is a one to one to one blend of red bell, orange bell, and poblanos for some heat. Sub in green bell peppers for the poblano if you don't buzz with spicy. For the aromatics, I've got five grams each of grated garlic and ginger, just like before. And this time, instead of scallions, I've got 20 grams of dried chili de arbol. Disclaimer, these are mega spicy and not really for eating. Instead, they perfume this dish with that signature Kung Pao fruity, smoky, chili thing. Lastly, I've got 30 grams of roasted and chopped peanuts to bring some texture. Now to cook this thing, I'm gonna preheat my 12 inch nonstick pan one more time and then quickly thank the sponsor of this video and manufacturer of said pan, Made In. Made In is a cookware company that partners with multi-generational factories and artisans to bring you a curated collection of materials and shapes that we all need in the kitchen. And while they design professional quality products for the home cook, their kitchenware is also used by the pros in Michelin star restaurants and by bad boy internet chefs who previously worked in Michelin star restaurants. I'm talking about me. You guys have seen me use made in products in quite a few of my videos over the last few months and I genuinely like the quality of them a lot. I actually asked for the saucier and the four quart saucepan for Christmas and then I got them. Thanks mom and dad. The pans that I got were made from stainless steel, but this made in 12 inch performance nonstick pan is made from the same five ply stainless that I really like from that line. And that translates to a super quick heat up and very even cooking. This pan is oven safe up to 500 degrees and it's nonstick, so it's very easy to clean. So if you wanna check out made in's nonstick cookware, head to the link in my description below. Thank you, Made In. Once my 12 inch pan is hot, I'll add in a little bit of oil, then my chicken thighs and a strong pinch of salt. I'll come back with a wooden spoon and spread that out and sear this chicken for five to six minutes or until it's well browned and cooked through like this. From here, I'll scoot this meat over to a bowl to hang out while I cook the vegetables. Back over at medium high heat, I'll add in another two teaspoons-ish of oil on top of the rendered chicken fat. Then in goes my celery, my peppers, and then a strong pinch of salt. Next, I'll jump in and stir that to combine. And once everything's well coated with oil and take it on just a touch of color, I'm gonna drop down my foil and steam fry these veggies. Again, that's gonna be for about one to two minutes and I'll come back halfway through and give it a stir. After two minutes of cooking, I'm gonna come back and take off this foil to see how things are looking and I can see some nice color and things have gotten a little bit softer. So next I'll add in my aromatics. In goes my dried chilies, then my ginger garlic, then I'll give that a stir and cook things for 30 to 45 seconds. And once things are smelling fruity, spicy, and gingery, I'll add in 30 grams of chopped peanuts and then all of my seared chicken thigh. Now, quick toss to get that all mixed together. And from there, in goes my stir fry sauce. A good barometer of whether or not your pan is hot enough at this point is how fast the stir fry sauce comes up to a boil. It shouldn't take longer than three to four seconds to start simmering hard. Now, once it's bubbling like this, I'm gonna keep on stir frying while I reduce it by about half for another 30 to 45 seconds. This is gonna soften the veggies just a little bit more, bringing them into that snappy tenderness that we're looking for in a quality stir fry. And once the sauce is reduced and coating everything nicely like this, I'm gonna hit the whole dish with a generous pinch of cracked black pepper. And there we go. Overall, this dish is super easy to make and it's quick. Even for someone who's slow with a knife, I think 25 minutes is reasonable. It's spicy, it's crunchy, it tastes good, and the combination of saucy peanuts on rice is real sick. 
I hope you try this soon. Okay, the last stir fry is my simplified weeknight version of sweet and sour shrimp. For the sauce, I'll combine 50 grams of soy sauce, 50 grams of mirin, 35 grams of rice vinegar, 40 grams of chicken stock, 5 grams or 1 tablespoon of cornstarch, 25 grams of sesame oil, 25 grams of sambal chili sauce, 10 grams of ketchup, yes, ketchup, and then 25 grams of sugar. A quick stir to combine, and now let's look at the ingredients. I've got 12 ounces or 350 grams of 2630 peeled and deveined shrimps, 100 grams of diced bell peppers, 200 grams or about eight ounces of snow peas, five grams each of ginger and garlic, and then 30 to 40 grams of chopped scallions. Okay, the cooking process is pretty much the same as before, so I'm gonna run through this one pretty quick. Hot pan, oil, then in goes the shrimps a little salt, and I'll cook on one side until these are mostly cooked through and I've taken on some browning on the first side. A quick stir to loosen them up and to give the back side a little bit of heat, then I'll move them over to the bowl to hang out while I cook the vegetables. By the way, the shrimp should only be about 75% cooked at this point. Next, I'll saute my snow peas and my bell peppers for about two minutes under some foil until they're softened and taken on some color like this. Then in goes my aromatics, a toss, toss, saute until fragrant, then in goes my stir fry sauce and I'll reduce it by about half. I'm doing this without the shrimp in the pan because those would get overcooked with all this boiling. And once the sauce is thickened up, I'll add in my shrimp and toss everything to combine. That residual heat is going to cook this shrimp very gently, keeping them nice and plump and moist. And there we go, a lighter, fresher version of the Mall Food Court Classic. Instead of being heavy and fried, it's bright, it's tart, it's in balance, and has a breath of fresh ginger and garlic. Oh, and I meant to mention that if you guys are worried about eating 20 grams of sugar, all of these recipes will work well with the zero calorie monk fruit sweetener from Lakanto. Not sponsored, but I use this product often to avoid sugar for obvious reasons. It doesn't taste gross like stevia or Splenda. Anyways, I hope you guys try these recipes soon. Let me know down in the comments which one you're gonna make. Let's eat this thing.